You know, with S class, you just don't sit down and start doing sketches. And at the end, uh, the bosses should go ahead and, and pick the nicest one. It's just not like this. S class is something special. It's uh, one of design icons. And S class is, for me, it's, it's all about proportion. It's the stance of the car. We have, this is a rear wheel drive car. The car has a certain proportion that not so many other cars have. And that's the thing that you have to, let's say, be aware before you start doing first sketch. S-Class uh, is the car of the brand. So um, it's, let's say, it's the biggest challenge you can get in this company. And Mercedes is the brand of the brands. I start to thought about the company, the brand, what is the value, what is the character, what are the customers, yeah? what is the, the whole world uh, of the brand to, to, ex to find a way how to express it then later in a particular proposal for the interior. The brief was to do something emotional, something that um, would attract new customers to the brand of Mercedes. So you have people who would maybe perceive Mercedes as um, more established, uh, safer looking cars or, or conservative cars, cars for, for older people and the brief was really to attract new customers to the brand. People like, like ourselves, younger people, people who, who might normally go for another brand and then they, they're surprised because they're, they see that Mercedes come up with something unexpected, something that kind of um, is a little bit provocative. Mercedes, we have so many different cars, you just don't sit down and do the nicest sketch. It does not work like this. You have to know what your goals are and S-Class does not really stand alone. It's, it's at the end a big family of, let's say, familiar features, familiar body language. Everything at the end must make sense. For me, it's more a living space for the passengers and the driver than, than a car, a, a common car. It's, it's kind of a li living space. So the message is like, feel good, feel relaxed, enjoy your drive or enjoy your being passenger or enjoy being a passenger on the back part, back seat of the car. How I want people to react when they see this car is to look twice, is to not look at the car and then look away and look at other cars. When this car is in traffic, it should, people should, should stare at it a little bit longer than they would a normal car and not people who are necessarily interested in cars. You know, for me, the success of a car is when a little kid smiles at the car and points at it when he's crossing the road and you're at the traffic lights. Or um, people who wouldn't necessarily buy car magazines or watch car programs. It's pure, it's sensual, has something to do with nature. You know, we say our design is always warm, it's human. It's not technical, it's not sharp, it's not hard. You want to touch it. It's, this is for me definitely this, the, the major inspiration comes from nature. So all these, let's say, long lines or, or very, very soft, soft surfacing, very round, very round surfacing. Everything is in transition, very sculptural. This is definitely pure nature. We very much looked at the way wind sculpts sand. Um, so sand dunes, how you get, you get um, in the desert, you get these very, very large sand dunes, which are very soft and, and flowing, concave and convex shapes. And then as the sand hits the top, as the, sorry, as the wind hits the top of the sand dune, you get this very defined edge. So there's this sort of contrast between the soft sculpted sand dunes and the defined edge, which the wind creates as it hits the top of the, of the sand dune. And you can see that actually on the surfacing of the, of the CLA. This is my job, you know, I, me as an as exterior designer. So I have to give you a feeling, yes, it's familiar, it's S-class. Yeah? It's coming home feeling. Yeah? It's not something that pff, it could be anything. Oh, I don't mind, it's just a big car. No, it's S-class, it's Mercedes. Well, I hope that the overall feeling or the reaction will be like, wow. Of course, yeah. So it's the, the best of the best. That's was that was our approach to make the best car of the world. It's it's our flagship 
of our brand, so we put in a lot of effort into to achieve this, this goal. If I'm driving the car and people look twice at the car, um, then it gives me a good feeling. You can tell if someone's impressed or not. And I think, I think, I, I just want that simplest of reactions, that people look at it and go, wow, that's a bit different, that's, and then they look at it again and that looks good. That looks good and it makes you want it more. Best or nothing means that uh, we always do, uh, let's say, a bit more than would be necessary or would be enough. For me, best or nothing is, for me personally, a kind of internal goal. You know, I want to give my best. The best or nothing is a, is a strong statement, it's a very powerful statement. You can live or die by this statement, um, it's, it's dangerous, but um, what's good about it is that it focuses everyone's um, attention on achieving the, um, a, one goal, the best. Look at the benchmark competition, where are they best, better than us, and let's be better than them in that area, and keep on and keep on, and it keeps us on our toes.